A live look this morning at Little Red Wagon Plants in South Tampa for our grilling and gardening week. It's coming up in about 20 minutes. Jenny Dean is gonna hang out with us to talk about the benefits of native landscaping. Plus, Jenny Dean, live this morning in Tampa. What's up, Jenny? Yeah, if you're uh, looking out in your yard, you're probably seeing a lot of these. Yep, oak leaves, a nice fresh coating. We're gonna tell you the best thing that you can do with these oak leaves and lots of other great tips for a Florida native yard. We've got all that coming up in just a few minutes. We are talking allergies. Mm. We're talking grilling and gardening all week on Bright Side. Today, we wanna focus on your yard, having a beautiful landscape here in Florida. Well, it can sometimes be a challenge. Yeah, when uh, the rain isn't helping us out so mm -hmm. much. The sandy soil, hot weather can really take a toll on certain types of plants. 10 Tampa Bay's Jenny Dean joins us from Tampa's Little Red Wagon this morning, Native Nursery, to help us all out. We could use some green thumb advice, Jenny. Absolutely, we could. The plants are all around me are living in fear right now that I'm going to try and kill them because that's apparently what I do. I do not have a green thumb. However, Anita Camacho is here to help all of us out and to help us become a friend to our plants and our, our wildlife all around us. So, Anita, I want to first start with, you know, there's one thing to say that to get a plant and to have a yard that thrives in Florida, but it's a different thing to have a native Florida landscape. What's the difference? Well, native Florida landscapes actually thrive easier in Florida because they they evolved here and they like our sandy soil. That's what they're used to and accustomed to. So you don't have to do a lot of work to amend the soil like you do for exotic plants that come from somewhere else and different soil types. So, you know, planting in our sandy soil is pretty easy. So your thumb gets greener right away. <laughs> <laughs> Plus they're used to the, you know, these, uh, the types of plants that, that are from Florida are used to the wet season and the dry season. So they can kind of handle all of right. that, the extremes. Exactly, that's true. All right, let's talk about this because everybody's seeing just the coating of leaves right now. We're all feeling it with our allergies. Um, and everybody just wants to rake these up and get rid of them. What should we be doing with all of these leaves? Well, ideally, you want to rake them back into your garden beds and use them as mulch. Uh, there's a lot of things that live in these leaves, and it's very important. Um, so what I do in my landscape is I put them back into the beds, and if they're on my sidewalk or driveway, I bag them up and use them as mulch in the fall when I need to remulch. So you don't do traditional mulch. This is what you would do instead. Just use some of the natural surroundings, and you're not even, you're not blowing it into the street or right. into the drains, which people get frustrated with. This goes right back in to nourish the soil. Right. And I, you have something there that you have found, like that we somebody would absolutely miss if they were raking these leaves and just throwing them out. So this is a cocoon, a luna moth cocoon. And a lot of things uh, actually pupate in our leaf litter and live in the leaf litter. So a lot of our wild bees, we have over 300 species of wild bees in Florida, and they, a lot of them live in leaf litter. So it's a very important home for them. And when you're raking things away, you might not see something like this. Um, it would just go into the trash. So we are killing a lot of, of wildlife when we get rid of these leaves. And it's important that we're thinking about all of the little critters and all of the things that live in our leaves and in our plants because they're what's helping everything kind of to regrow and return, right? Oh, absolutely. This is this is fertilizer. It breaks right down for the trees and, and it also nourishes the soil. It's also food for some of the animals. Uh, the red banded hair streak actually eats this as a caterpillar as their host plant. So oak leaves, um, as an example, are very important food source as well. So we want to promote the natural insects and the natural plants all around us and the native ones because that's what's going to help keep things going. All right, coming up next, we've got lots for you in our next half hour. We're going to talk about how dry it's going to be. And I know, Grant, that's what you're talking about now because we are going into the dry season. <laughs> yeah. So we really need to have these native plants that can handle this. Yeah, the dry season officially beginning back in October but as you go th throughout the dry season, obviously things just get drier and drier and drier because we just haven't seen all that much rainfall. 